Let's talk spectrum analyzers. Spectrum analyzers are one of those machines that seems to be quite confusing, and uh, it really isn't, but uh, it, it does seem to be. Now that I have a, uh, an analog, um, a strictly analog spectrum analyzer, we can go through it and see how things work, and we can measure each component, which I kind of want to do. So here is the manual for the HP8558 spectrum analyzer. And so uh, there's always a block diagram. So this is a block diagram of where it comes in. And then, uh, then it goes into this thing, and then it goes into this thing. And then it goes over here and does these things. And then it does this thing. And then it goes over here. And it goes over here. And it does this. And then here. And then... So, <laughs> so this is quite ridiculous, right? So there's lots of that. So let's let's look at a more simplified um, more simplified one. So that's the block diagram that they give you for troubleshooting, and this is the block diagram they give you for ease of understanding. <laughs> but it's still pretty big. Um, and let's uh, let's try to break it up. So there's an input. There's a first thing. There's a second thing and there's a third thing. That's all you need to know. And then you'll know how spectrum analyzers work. And this is really easy to know. And this is really easy to know. And this is the tricky part. And this is really easy to know. So really, um, once you understand each of the building blocks, it'll be really easy to put it together. So before we even look at that though, let's talk what a spectrum analyzer is and what it is that it's trying to accomplish. So what's it trying to do? Well, it's trying to make a graph. And it's trying to make a graph like this. So that, that's our zoom in way to go. So what is this graph? This graph is uh, frequency versus amplitude. So for every frequency, how strong is the amplitude? And it can be a, a, a simple thing. Maybe it's a transmitter. So this might be somebody's radio, like maybe a ham radio or something, and the person's transmitting there on a particular frequency. And then over here, there's somebody transmitting on that frequency. So a lot of the modern uh, radios these days have a spectrum analyzer display built into them. And you can see this picture, and then you can say, oh, I want to go talk to this guy, and then you can tune your radio over and go over to there. So what does it mean to tune your radio? Well, your radio kind of looks like this. Your radio kind of looks like a bandpass filter, right? And so you could say, okay, I want to listen to this guy. So I'm going to move my, I'm going to move my bandpass there, and I, then I'm going to uh, put it through some type of processing. Maybe this signal is going up and down, AM modulated, or maybe it's wiggling side to side, FM modulated. Um, and you could tune it to the different stations, right? So that's kind of like how a radio works. Uh, we want to, uh, we want to tune it. And what does the spectrum analyzer do? Well, the spectrum analyzer gives you this picture all at the same time. So it's not a radio. It's trying to give you this picture. So how does it get this picture? So this is, uh, say, all of the radios, the FM radios here from 88 megahertz to 106 megahertz in, in the local area. These are the radio uh, stations that are being uh, broadcasting, you know, rock and roll and country or, you know, whatever. These are the different stations. And so we want to have a machine that can, that can um, make, this, make this diagram. So we're going to have something like a, a, um, a filter. And so let's say that it's kind of like a radio. So we're going to move our filter across, okay? And whatever power is under this um, bandpass filter. So this bandpass filter is going to capture a certain amount of power, and it's going to sum that up, and it's going to give you one value. So right here, it's going to give you a value of zero, 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 zero. Oop. Now we're going to start to get a little bit of power. Now we're going to get a little bit more, and now we're going to get the whole thing. And then as we go across, it goes down again. So if we had a filter that moved across, we would um, be able to detect these peaks, but we wouldn't be able to reproduce them exactly. 
Now, if we had a, a filter that was infinitely skinny, then we could reproduce this curve perfectly. But if we have a wide filter, then this lump kind of gets spread out, right? We're trying to take this, uh, we're taking this peak and we're kind of flattening it out. So the picture that we're going to end up with is a little bit of the blurry picture of really what's going on. So the narrower and the narrower this filter is, the better and better your spectrum analyzer will be. So when you buy a spectrum analyzer, the important question is to ask, what is the resolution bandwidth? The resolution bandwidth is how narrow is this filter? How, how accurately, accurately can it see everything, right? Okay, so how does the spectrum analyzer do its job? Okay, so if you had a spectrum analyzer that could move its filter in frequency, and you could go all the way across and you would build up a picture of what it is that you want to see. Okay. So that's how, that's how it could work. So if you went into the lab and you said, I'm going to design a really, really narrow filter that I can move in frequency, you will fail. <laughs> it's a really, 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 really hard thing to do. And so people don't, um, it's easy to make a filter that stays stationary that doesn't move in wavelength and you can make them really, really narrow. I've showed those before. They're crystal filters. If you have like a, an RC filter, you can get a nice broad one. If you have a, maybe an LC filter, you can make it a little bit narrower. If you use a crystal filter, you can get it really, really narrow. Okay. So depending on what type of filter you build, you can make this wider or narrower, but it's very, very hard once you get it built to make it move. So like if it's a crystal filter, you can't magically make your crystals change wavelength. They're going to stay in one spot. So we can't do this trick. Okay. But what if we could do this? What if we could move the wavelengths underneath the, um, the filter, then we could do the exact same thing. Okay. So, how do we get all of those radio stations to move back and forth? Well, you can't get the radio stations themselves to move back and forth, but what you can do is you can, uh, use a mixer. So you can take these frequencies and let's say you take these frequencies and you, uh, mix them with a hundred megahertz. So instead of you seeing this picture, you multiply it by a hundred and um, you're going to get everything shifted up. Okay. So now all of your stations, instead of being from 88 to 106, they're going to be double that they're going to be, they're going to be over here somewhere. Okay. So if you understand how mixers work, we're going to take all of this and we're going to run it into a mixer. That's hundred megahertz. So everything here gets a hundred added to it. Okay. So this will be 188. This will be 206. Okay. So everything gets added to it. And then you build your filter. So it operates over here. Right. And then instead of having to move this, you just have this over here and then you change the mixer frequency. So instead of a hundred megahertz, you make it 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. And then that shifts everything over a little bit. And if you have that oscillator change rapidly from say a hundred megahertz to 200 megahertz, zip, 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 that's a sweep. And then you're sweeping, you're sweeping everything under the filter. Everything is multiplied by a particular frequency and it gets swept under the filter. Okay. So that's how the spectrum analyzer works. Let's assume that we have a case where we have a spectrum that goes between 100 and 300 megahertz. So there's like a radio station at 100, a radio station at 200 and a radio station at 300. So we want to build up, we want to build a spectrum analyzer that can see this. So we've designed a bandpass filter. That's the one that doesn't move. We've designed a filter at 500. Okay. We're going to take our incoming. We're going to put it through a mixer. Okay. So mixers are always drawn like this. We're going to have a local oscillator, L O local oscillator. That's what L O stands for. And then the thing that comes out is going to have to go through this, uh, 
500. So the, the output's always going to have to be 500. No matter what this is, we want the output to be 500. So uh, how, do we get, how do we get 500 from 100? Well, if we use 600 megahertz, we can use the uh, subtractive product. So 600 minus 100 is 500. And then if it went to 700, 700 minus 200 is 500. And then if it went to 800, 800 minus 3 is 500, right? So we can have a local oscillator that goes between 600 and 800, and it just keeps sweeping, keeps sweeping, keeps sweeping. Everything, it, this is going to take, is going to be taken and it's going to be slid under there, right? And uh, it's going to um, slide left to right, or right, right to left. It's going to slide this way, right? So we're going we're gonna, to uh, build up the thing by the subtractive thing. So in our particular case, our HP8558, the local oscillator is set to be uh, 2 gigahertz to 3.5 gigahertz, okay? So when it's here at 0, okay, 0 and 2 is going to be 2 gigahertz, okay? So our bandpass filter will have to be 2 gigahertz. And then as we go up to 3.5, and our spectrum goes between 0 and 1.5 gigahertz, that's what the specification of the spectrum analyzer, 1.5, so 3.5 minus 1.5 is also 2. So our local oscillator is going between 2 and 3.5 and gigahertz. And that's going to give us a usable range from 0 to 1.5 gigahertz. So that's the way that's the way ours is going to work, which means that our bandpass filter is going to have to be at two gigahertz. So let's see if that's true. All right. So our signal comes in here, it goes through an attenuator, and then it goes through a first converter. The first converter mixes it with a local oscillator. So this is a mixer, converter, mixer, same thing. And the local oscillator is going to be 2 to 3.5 gigahertz. And here we have 2 gigahertz. It says 200 megahertz, 2,000 megahertz. So we have 2 gigahertz here. So, so we've taken uh, our 0 to 1.5 gigahertz. We've mixed that with an LO, which is 2 to 3.5 gigahertz. And now we have 2 gigahertz right here, okay? So 2 gigahertz is fine, but that's awfully high, so we want to make it lower, okay? And so now we're going to mix that with, uh, it's actually 70, I know it's hard to read, it's actually uh, 1748 megahertz and that's going to mix these two together and it's going to give you a signal of 301 megahertz okay so we're going to do a double jump we're first going to convert it to 2 gigahertz and then we're going to convert it to uh, 300 megahertz okay and then we're going to convert it again okay and this time we have a 200 and I can't read it. It's kind of blurry. I think it's 280. Yes, 280 megahertz. Okay. And so what do we get out here? We get 300 minus 280. We get 21. Okay. We get 21 megahertz. Okay. So what do you think? This is, remember, this is our, uh, our bandpass filter. So what do you think our bandpass filter is designed for? 21 megahertz, okay? So all of this is just a 21 megahertz uh, bandpass filter. Now it's a fancy bandpass filter because we can change its shape. We can make it narrow, 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 or we can make it wider and wider and wider. So we'll take a look at this. And it's very, very fancy. Um, this is a double pass filter. So there's two filters in here. So section one, section two, 21 megahertz. And then we're going to have some gain. We're going to make the signal bigger. Because remember, we're starting out with really, really small things. We have to put gain in all along the way. We're going to, we're going to amplify it. 
that might add some harmonics and stuff when we amplify it. So we're going to put in a second filter. So these filters are matched. So this is 21 mega, megahertz. This is 21 megahertz. And then it comes out to a log amplifier. So all of this section is our filter. All right. So log amplifier, bandpass filter, mixer. Now our mixer got very, very complicated. Our mixer was one, two, three times. Why did we do it one, two, three times? Why did we mix it once, then mix it twice, then mix it three times? And that's where um, spectrum analyzers really shine or are bad, depending on the design of this. You want to make sure that every time that you run it through a mixer, remember a mixer will give you both the plus products and the minus products. It'll add things and it'll subtract things. And you want to make sure that you always don't put things in that you don't want to see. So if you multiply things by two to three gigahertz and you end up here, you also will have other harmonics laying around. And those might have made it through a particular type of filter. So you say, okay, we're going to put in a filter. There's a, uh, usually there's, there's some types of filters in these things too. There'll be a two gigahertz filter. There'll be a three megahertz filter, 300 megahertz filter. There'll be a 280 or a 20. Well, we have the 20 megahertz, but there'll be two filters. There'll be a two gigahertz. There'll be a 300 megahertz. But by moving everything up and then moving everything down, and then by moving everything down again, we can eliminate harmonics that might end up being on top of one another and that we can still see them. So we don't want the pluses and the minuses ending up on top of one another. And so that's what this whole trick is here. So it's, 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 it's complicated, but you don't need to think of it that way. You can just think of this as uh, my, simple, my simple diagram of we just have one local oscillator and we're just going to have it. So we could have taken this and just converted it. So it was all at 21 megahertz. Well, that wouldn't have worked because we want to see 21 megahertz, right? So we can't just do one jump. We need to jump, at least jump up and jump down because we want to end up at 21 megahertz. Now, if we were able to design one of these, oops, I'm sorry. If we were able to design one of these um, at two gigahertz, we could have just put it here and be done. We wouldn't have needed to jump two more times, but that would have been very, very difficult. So they do everything here at 21 megahertz because that's where it's easy. And uh, it's easy to build amplifiers at 21 megahertz and things. So our, our uh, fancy 1.5 gigahertz spectrum analyzer only needs high frequencies at the very beginning and then everything else is low frequency, right? Low, 100, 300 megahertz is still low, right? So 300 megahertz and then 21 megahertz is certainly low. And uh, that's what the rest of it is, right? All right. So I think in upcoming videos, what I want to do is I want to show each one. Now, I don't have any test equipment that goes above the gigahertz, so I can't show you the local oscillator. We might be able to get the local oscillator and mix it down and look at just that, but that's sort of done for us already, so we might be able to just do that. But uh, at least at uh, even 300 megahertz, my scope only goes to 100 megahertz, so it might be even difficult to see these signals. Um, I do have a second spectrum analyzer that's good to a gigahertz, so at least we can look at these with a spectrum analyzer. And then we can look at these with an oscilloscope. So upcoming videos, I think I'll look at LOs. I'll look at mixers. Then I'll have a video looking at this bandpass filter. Hopefully we can sweep this filter and try to change it and um, watch that on a, a display. And then we can uh, sweep the log amplifier and see if it's really logarithmic or not. Um, so I think we can learn a lot.